Hey there, Erevin here again. With the new Warbond Democratic Detonation being released into Helldivers 2 today, we're going to be going over the R36 Eruptor. This weapon has some incredible destructive power for sure, but how good is it really? Well, like with the rest of the videos in this series, we'll be going over all the weapon's technical specifications, target effectiveness, and damage breakpoints to find out. As usual, all testing, thoughts, and opinions are derived solely from Difficulty 9 Helldive to give you the most accurate data, thoughts, and opinions on the Eruptor from the perspective of playing the game's highest difficulty. So, the Eruptor sits in the explosive category of weapons for good reason, not so much being a sniper rifle per se as a rifle grenade launcher, sharing many similarities with an AMPR, or anti-material payload rifle. The weapon is chambered with grenade rounds, packed with shrapnel that detonates when contacting any hard surface or enemy. This detonation will also be forced after 150 meters of travel time, detonating regardless of impact, making the weapon's maximum range 150 meters. The explosion that follows contact will deal damage within 8 meters in all directions of impact, or in other words, a sphere 16 meters in diameter around the impact site. However, the outer ring of this explosion only deals around 20% of the full explosive damage, while the inner 12 meters deals the full amount. In addition to the bullet damage, though, this explosion deals an additional 200 damage on top of the listed 380 bullet damage you see on the tooltip, bringing the weapon's total damage to a single target up to an absurd 580 damage. Guess Arrowhead decided to not bother fixing its tooltip before release like they recently did for the Scorcher. This explosion, as you would imagine, is enough to end you and then some. Shots that land within 8 meters of you will result in you being ragdolled and taking 20 damage. Shots landing within your immediate area will result in a ragdoll or death. This damage can be reduced by wearing explosive-resistant armor or nullified by a personal shield generator altogether. The shield generator also comes with the added benefit of nullifying the ragdoll effect you would otherwise inflict on yourself. For these reasons, I did make this backpack a mainstay in my loadouts while utilizing the Eruptor, especially considering my team was running the weapon as well. Keep this one in mind if you intend to use the Eruptor for Terminids especially, as they have a tendency to breach your 8 meter comfort zone pretty frequently. To finish off talking about the explosive tendencies of the Eruptor, you've heard correctly that the Eruptor can in fact close nests and fabricators through the vent with ease, the first primary weapon to be able to do so. As you would expect by my description of these explosive rounds, the Eruptor is extremely loud, likely the loudest weapon I've tested thus far, triggering a response from enemies as far as 100 meters away during my testing. If you bring this in, plan to fight your way back out. Stealth is definitely a challenging option with this thing. ACOG.JPEG returns for another round with the Eruptor, allowing for a variable zoom of 1x, 2x, or 4x on the optic, giving you everything you could ever want Besides a better Microsoft Paint job, that is. This weapon is a bolt-action rifle. Kind of. In reality, the racking of the bolt is an illusion to pretty up its low fire rate. This means that you can cancel this action by doing anything else and still fire when the next shot would have been ready regardless, opening up some interesting opportunities for weapon switching, as well as utilizing any other action in the meantime. The muzzle velocity sits around railgun level, which is surprisingly slow, meaning for distant targets you'll need to be leading your shots properly. Or not. Considering the explosion deals enough damage on its own to be lethal to a wide variety of enemies, simply landing the shot anywhere near the enemy will often be enough to score the kill, making this a very easy weapon to use regardless. The bullet alone is powerful enough to punch holes through objects such as fences, similar to the way the Slugger did before its nerf. Rest in peace, Slugger. If this was a utility you enjoyed previously, know that it is available with the Eruptor. This stopping power is also accompanied by some serious stagger for anything that manages to survive a shot from this monster, making it difficult for enemies to fight back while being fired on by the Eruptor. Although unfortunately, due to its detonating nature, the bullet will not punch through multiple soft enemies in a line due to exploding upon impact on its first victim. Can't have everything, I suppose. Guess it'll just have to settle for the absurd explosive radius around this impact instead, which is uh, probably better than the piercing enemies would likely ever be anyway. Sway speed is a bit on the slow side, similar to the Dominator. This felt pretty appropriate due to the weapon size, so no complaints here. Just keep in mind, fast target acquisition isn't its strongest quality, although overcompensating the sway can get you on target a bit quicker as a result. And, as we have quite the waiting period between those shots, there's not really any downside for doing this. 
Magazine capacity is only five bullets, but with the amount of raw power and saturation those five bullets are bringing to the table, this will almost never equal only five kills. You also get 12 magazines in reserve, bringing our total ammo count to a pretty good 65 shots. Between its slow and steady fire rate, abundant ammo in reserve, and resupplies returning six whole magazines each, you are unlikely to have any ammo issues whatsoever unless going absolutely wild in a terminated mission with this thing. To round things off, the reload speed is quite slow with the Eruptor, made even slower should you completely empty the magazine before reloading by the additional animation of racking the bolt afterwards. You can prevent this extra animation time with no downsides by reloading one bullet early, as one round is still in the chamber when you do so. Your ammo count upon inspection will actually still read 6 out of 5, meaning you've wasted no ammo and saved on reload time. Keeping track of your shots, or at least checking if you are on the last round before reloading, can lead to a more comfortable experience, as your Helldiver will perform that racking animation even if no bullets remain to be loaded, wasting even more time on reloads potentially, as you'll rack only to realize the magazine is empty, leading you to painfully reload and rack again regardless. So a bit of attention paid to your ammo can go a long way here. With that, we've now ended our technical breakdown, so I'll now be moving on to the all-important damage, breakpoints, and target effectiveness section. The Eruptor sports medium penetration. Kind of. Similar to the Scorcher's ability to permeate its explosive damage through hard armor, dealing damage to those behind it, the Eruptor is able to do much the same, giving it generally the exact same target effectiveness, and then some, being able to deal with a huge array of enemies for a primary weapon. Due to the absurd firepower of the Eruptor, I'm also going to be going over each enemy in the game, breaking down which can be eliminated through a headshot, through a body shot, or even just being in the explosive epicenter of where the bullet lands. With the stage set, let's begin with the Automaton faction. Lightbots are absolutely shredded by the Eruptor, being eliminated in one shot anywhere, or even just from being within 6 meters of where the bullet lands due to the explosion. They stand no chance and will often be taken out 4 more at a time with just a single bullet as a result. Striders meet a similar fate to Lightbots, being taken out any time the rider's body is within 6 meters of where the round lands, as while the bullet itself doesn't rip through the plate, the explosion alone permeates through and is more than enough to drop them reliably. Devastators fare little to no better being instantly taken out by a headshot, or two shots to the body despite half the bullet damage being reduced due to the armor. The explosion will take care of them eventually, but this is likely an enemy you'll be throwing its own bullets. The raw power of the Eruptor is volcanic indeed. Berserkers often considered a very tanky adversary are dumpstered by the Eruptor's raw damage, being dropped in just one bullet to just about anywhere but the arms. When firing into a pack of them as well, those that survive are going to also be staggered and unable to make much ground towards you. Shocking results for sure, but I must say not nearly as shocking as what happened to the gunships. Considered a relatively tanky foe for most support weapons, let alone primaries, the Eruptor, upon landing a shot to the underbelly where the searchlight is, can instantly eliminate them. I know. Crazy, right? This isn't the easiest shot to make, however, as remember, we have a maximum range of 150 meters here and a less than stellar muzzle velocity, making it a difficult shot to land, but with incredible results for a practiced marksman. You could also aim for the thrusters, but likely you'll end up just destroying it through the body much easier. Tanks and cannon turrets are a bit difficult to take out with the Eruptor, but not impossible. The low rate of fire makes it very challenging to land the four shots needed to the heatsink. But thanks to its explosive property, similar to the Scorcher, any shots on the plated surface towards the back of these enemies will result in damage being dealt via the explosion to their heatsinks, making the four shots required a little bit more palatable. My favorite trick with these enemies, however, was to fire the Quasar at the heatsink and then follow it up with just a single shot from the Eruptor. This is a very fast way of eliminating them before they have any chance to turn on you. Mortars and anti-air guns are unaffected by the Eruptor, so bring out your support weapons, stratagems, or the Hell Bomb to clear these. Can't have it all. Hulks, unfortunately, due to having only Class 3 penetration on the bullet, cannot be damaged through their heads or bodies by the Eruptor. However, they are taken out by it in just three shots to the heatsink. Probably best to use stratagems or support weapons for these still, but it'd be absurd if that wasn't the case. 
Despite the automaton's return to the galaxy, the factory strider still eluded me during testing. I've yet to even see one firsthand. If someone has firsthand experience with these, and if the eruptor can damage them, I'd thank you if you could post this information in the comments down below for us. That does it for the automaton, so let's talk about the terminids. There is an obvious challenge to bringing this weapon to the terminids I alluded to earlier. You are very prone to blowing yourself up if you should fire the Eruptor on a target too close to you. Even just ragdolling yourself here can prove fatal as a horde pounces on the opportunity you presented it. For this reason, I strongly do advise you bring the personal shield generator for terminid missions. For a much smoother experience, giving you a free shot within your fatal range when needed, and making you immune to your own stagger. With that being said, here are the terminid breakpoints. Warriors and scavengers are atomized by the Eruptor. One shot landing anywhere on their body or even just being within its blast radius is enough to turn both of these very common adversaries to paste. Firing into crowds of terminids will regularly result in at least three kills a shot. Hunters are turned to paste just as easily with one shot anywhere or even near them. However, they are very quick and have a tendency to split up and flank while tracking you, making them a bit of a pain to deal with for the Eruptor in large groups at times. The Redeemer sidearm and the ability to fire with relative accuracy from the hip with both of these weapons will help keep you safe from swarms due to losing much less momentum while doing so. The personal shield is also clutch here as it will prevent those hunters from slowing you in addition to your self-democratic detonation should you fire the weapon a bit too close to you at an oncoming hunter. Hive guards prove slightly more durable, but not by much. One shot landed in their head region on the lower part of that front plate will take them out. Two shots to the upper plate or one shot to their exposed body is enough to bring them down. Just being within that radius of the explosion from the Eruptor is also typically enough to drop them in two shots as well. Bile spewers and nursing spewers are taken down in two shots anywhere. One shot to their head will also take down a nursing spewer or one well-placed shot to that exposed part on the bottom of the bile spewer's head will turn either of them into goo instantly. Any surviving spewers are also staggered and unable to spit at you during a brief period after receiving damage from the Eruptor. So basically, they get owned. Brood Commanders, funny enough, can sustain a headshot without being decapitated by the Eruptor. This felt like an outlier in my expectations. They seem to typically take two shots to the head or their body to bring down. Only once did I see one lose its head from a singular shot that landed behind it. Unsure what's going on here, but dealt with easy enough all the same. Shriekers are taken out in just one shot, of course, but due to their spastic flying nature and the Eruptor's sway and muzzle velocity and maximum range, it can be difficult to take them out reliably with it. Best to just keep these from spawning to begin with by taking them out with a long-range anti-tank option, as the Eruptor will deal no damage to their nest. Chargers can be taken out in four shots to the rears with the Eruptor, due to them bleeding out shortly after losing it. Not the best option for taking them out, but far better than most primaries perform against them and an easier target than landing those joint shots would be. Bile Titans only take damage to the rear from the Eruptor, typically being broken in two to three shots. The angle you have to put yourself out here will often ragdoll you without the personal shield and cannot result in a kill unless the Titan is suffering from previous injuries. Best to use your stratagems or support weapons to deal with these. Stalkers go down in just one shot to the body anywhere. They approach fast though, so make sure to blast them before they can close the gap, or else you could be in for a very bad time. That's all the enemy breakpoints in the game, so how good is it? Well, in my opinion, the R36 Eruptor has an unheard of, absurd amount of raw power in an area of effect not even close to exhibited by any other primary weapons in the game currently. Its muzzle velocity, ergonomics, sway speed, magazine size, fire rate, and effective range limitations are all small prices to pay compared to the sheer carnage you can unleash upon the enemy with its well above support level damage and area of effect, leading me to the conclusion that the Eruptor will be carving its way into the loadouts for myself, as well as many Helldivers across the Galactic War. An absolute beast of a weapon for sure. Thank you for watching till the end, and have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. And now, another helpful tip from General Brash. Aravin has worked all through the day to bring us the most detailed possible information on our all-new Eruptor. For his efforts, I am ordering all active Helldivers to like, comment, and subscribe to his channel. Failure to do so will result in R&D nerfing the Eruptor by tomorrow. Brash tactics! Use them or die trying!